Hey, Brother Roy here, Old School Bible Baptist Ministries. You know, the devil has been busy for a long time attacking the Word of God. It began in the garden with his first words to a human being, and that was to Eve. And he said, Yea, hath God said. Yea, hath God said. And he ain't changed his game plan up much down through the centuries. Um, we want to talk today about one of his most vicious attacks against the Word of God, and that is against 1 John 5, 7. Let's pray. Father, we come to you today, and we th just thank you so much for our salvation. We th thank you so much for the blood. We thank you so much for Jesus. Just, uh, God, you're just so, so, so good to us, Lord, and um, just can't, can't even begin to count your many blessings. And most of all, I thank you for your book that you gave it to us, that you preserved it, each and every word, including 1 John 5, 7. And uh, just help us to have clarity of mind and uh, see beyond the, the fumblings of human scholarship into the spiritual realm and recognize the word of God in Jesus name. Amen. 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 So, you know, first John five, seven, if you're not familiar with first John five, seven, first John five, seven in your King James Bible, amen, says, for there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Now, for me, <laughs> I'm reading the Word of God, and I come on that verse, and the author of the Word of God, the Holy Spirit of God, that lives inside of me, bears witness to that, that that is the word of God. Jesus says, uh, uh, my sheep <laughs> know my voice. They hear my voice. Amen. And as, as every other word in this book bears witness with the Holy Ghost inside of me, I read that. I don't need to go any farther. I read that and I say, hey, amen, glory to God, Holy Ghost. <laughs> that's, that's the word of God. But uh, there has been a very definite attack against that verse. Now, you can go and look at my other video from a while back on the whiteboard, uh, where, did, where did our Bible come from? And I, 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 I do the whole teaching on it. That is not the purpose of this video, to give the entire history of, uh, of the Bible and the manuscripts and preservation and whatnot. We're just going to talk about 1 John 5, 7. Let me say this at the onset. When we come into discussions of the preservation of the Word of God, and keep in mind that inspiration without preservation is a sad joke. You can't separate inspiration and preservation. So what? God inspired it, but then just let it go away? No, if he inspired it, he preserved it. Amen. And so we have to recognize preservation in the same way we recognize inspiration. And that will uh, bring us to a place where we can believe Psalms 12, 6 and 7, which says the words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in the furnace of earth. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. And that's God's promise, and that's what he did. And his words are readily available to us, <laughs> as it says in the book of uh, Isaiah, seek ye out the book of the Lord. Amen. But First John 5, 7. First John 5, 7 is quite possibly the strongest verse on the Trinity and the deity of Christ in the Bible. So you can see why it would be of special attention to the devil to try to get rid of it. Amen? Now, here's the funny thing to notice in scholarship, if you will. 
with the doctor smell funguses and doctor bottle stoppers in their ivory towers. Amen. When they begin to talk about textual criticism, manuscript evidence, biblical preservation, you'll notice all they talk about are men and manuscripts. They talk about men and they talk about manuscripts. They discuss it like archaeologists discussing archaeological digs and archaeologists and history. Never, never in their discussion do they factor in the equation of Satan and God. Nowhere. Read all their books. They talk like the devil and the Lord don't exist. And you cannot study manuscript evidence and textual criticism if you push God out of the equation. No, throughout, throughout the entire time when you're studying something like the Word of God, the only 100% pure and perfect thing on the face of the planet, God's very words is revelation to us. You don't think this is a spiritual matter? You don't think that as we as we look down through history and examine the men and the manuscripts, that we need to look for what was God doing? And as important, what was the devil doing? We don't need to factor in the spiritual warfare and the battle over the word of God. But no, they don't do that. They don't even mention God. They don't even mention devil. All they talk, all they talk about is like a bunch of unsaved, secular uh, uh, brainiacs. They just sit and talk about, well, this manuscript, this manuscript, and these guys, and these guys, and these guys. Yeah, but what was God doing? What was the devil doing? I mean, that is what they miss. And so there, there are literally thousands of words and passages and chapters that have been removed in all the modern versions of the Bible. And the devil has been successful in that. And the, the all these fake modern versions that are based on bad manuscripts and uh, faulty uh, theories of Westcott and Hort in, in their theories of textual criticism. And, and we, go watch the video where our Bible came from. And they lean towards all these lies and this false narrative that was put out basically from the Roman Catholic Church and Westcott and Hort. And it, that is, that's what the devil was doing. See? And then you have got to look over here. I said, well, what was God doing? How did God, how was God preserving his word? But you also have to observe, and how was the devil trying to destroy it? If you don't factor that into the equation, you're not going to come up with a, a correct answer. Uh, you're basically, and that's what these guys are, they're Bible atheists. They're Bible atheists. They want to talk about the Bible and this, blah, 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 but they don't even really believe in God. Their God isn't even <clears throat> powerful enough to preserve the book. Uh, he can't even keep his promise. Uh, it's just a, well, best guess and maybe and blah, blah, blah. That's what happens. So the attack was made on 1 John 5, 7, and it was a good attack, and uh, uh, it... Uh, it, the devil was wiping out manuscripts and, and, and putting false manuscripts and, and all that. But God, but God preserved it. And uh, I'm just going to read a little bit here from, uh, uh, from, the, from, from the notes in my Ruckman Reference Bible. And uh, for First John 5, 7, all right? The Trinity has been torn out of the verse in every new corrupt apostate Laodicean publication by the Alexandrian cult, which followed the texts of Nessel, Allen, and Metzger, and Westcott and Hort. There is an unbroken line of succession for the verse, all right? Now, here's what God was doing, all right? We just told you what the devil was doing. And that's all that the corrupt stuff of Nessel, Allen, Metzler, Westcott, and Hort. That's how the devil was working to try to get rid of the get rid of the verse. Now, here's how God preserved it. All right. Starting with the old Syriac version, 
in AD 170, pretty close to the source. That has 1 John 5, 7. Then you start going to some of the church fathers, and it's the older version. Tatean, AD 180, quotes the verse. The old Latin versions and Tertullian, AD 200, they retain the verse. Cyprian, AD 255, he retains the verse. Priscillian and Athanasius, AD 350, they retain the verse. Council of Carthage, AD 415, they retain the verse. Jerome, AD 450, uh, for, uh, Carth Council of Carthage was 415, Jerome, AD 450, Cassidorius, AD 480, Fulgentius, AD 510, Codex Wyan Burgenus, AD 750, and then we get into minuscule manuscript, 88 and 1150, and four different Waldensian Bibles, minuscule manuscript evidence, and minuscule manuscript 61. Uh, so here's what we're saying. It was always there. All the old church fathers quoted it. It was in it was in all the old early first Bibles. But then the devil got involved with the Roman Catholic Church and all that mess going on down in Alexandria, Egypt, and they began to corrupt it and corrupt it and corrupt it. And he almost he almost wiped it out. That's why they say the oldest and best manuscripts don't contain this. Well, that's because the, the devil almost wiped it out. And what they call the oldest and best manuscripts are the corrupt Roman Catholic manuscripts coming out of Egypt, not the Syrian Byzantine text type that came out of Antioch in Syria that was done by the believers. It was done, the Egyptian stuff down in Alexandria was in the school of Alexandria, started by Philo. It was a school of Greek philosophy. It was a secular school that did not believe and reverence the word of God. What are you going to believe the manuscripts that came out of a, a secular school where they handled the, the, they handled the Bible just like any other book in literature? Or are you going to believe the line of manuscripts that was preserved by the body of Christ, God's believing church at Antioch? <laughs> what was God doing? What was the devil? You see how when you take God and the devil out of the equation, you're liable to believe anything. No, and then we don't even we don't need the Greek, but if you do go to the Greek, if you leave out what you call this the uh Johannine comma is what the scholars call first John 5 7. If you leave it out, the genders of the witnesses in the first part of the verse, do not match that of spirit, water, and blood in verse 8, showing that something was removed from the text in all your fake Bibles. The Greek doesn't even match in the genders when you take the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost out. It leaves a big hole that's obvious that that was supposed to be there. No. <laughs> Every single word in your King James Bible, is the Word of God. It was inspired by God, and it was preserved by God. <laughs> that is, if you believe in God, and you can figure in to the whole equation what the devil was doing and what God was doing, just another place you got to rightly divide. Just believe the book. Hey, <laughs> little Bible, clear up a college education every time. Amen? God bless you. We'll see you in the next one.